Ian Livingston fought Summer's bushfires with all his might, but he was no match. The blaze so ferocious, his visor melted to his face and his gloves caught fire. Red, black, ember-filled winds came through and the first one ignited the car and the second one had a good go at igniting me and the house. He spent weeks in an induced coma in Concord Hospital, but almost five months on with wounds that are still healing, Ian has returned to work rebuilding homes. We have got so much work. As well as rebuilding, there is just so much going on. These are the first two homes to rise from the ashes in Cabago. Owner and builder Andrew Hayden lost seven properties in the New Year's Eve blaze. He's worked from dawn to dusk ever since to rebuild, recover and put roofs back over his tenants' heads. But the process is bittersweet. It's final basically and it's, there's no return. But a few weeks after that they tend to be looking at it as a clean slate and there's hope basically for what they're going to do with the properties in the future. A major step forward is the clearing of rubble from the town's main street. Piece by piece, contractor Lang O'Rourke is removing the remnants of buildings that have scarred the landscape for the past four and a half months. So to have it cleaned up and at least people can move on um, and start planning for what, you know, what might happen up there. So that's a, a really important step, I think. Under newly relaxed restrictions, residents can also once again meet at the beloved Cabago Hotel. Coming together as a community has been difficult given the coronavirus crisis. It's also kept some services and support at bay. We really do need some support, particularly with mental health. We need it desperately. It's something the state government maintains it's acutely aware of. Our biggest issue and what keeps me up at night has always been uh, people are falling through the cracks and with all best will, uh, we're trying to do everything. Under a new $8.5 million program, the Deputy Premier is promising all bushfire-impacted families and individuals will be contacted to ensure they're accessing support available. For the people of Cabago, how that program is delivered will be crucial, with the community crying out for more support face-to-face -face on the ground. We need to still some hope in the people in the area that there is a solution. Samara Gardner, Wind News.